It's cold, it's windy, but we've got some fuel, we got some oil, we're getting more fuel, and we're going flying. fun flying this weekend. We're gonna go fly a DC-3 and we're gonna go get a cylinder changed on this thing. And I'm gonna go pick up my official DC-3 second command type rating. Now we're gonna take a look at some of the differences between Sirius XM weather and ADS-B. And at the 367 Hotel Paparazzi Tower, wind 290 at one, correction, 290 at gust 28, runway 28 at Fox Track, clear for takeoff. 28 at Fox Track, clear for takeoff, and the 367 Hotel Bomb. Okay, finals clear, lights are on, pitot heat's on. Owl flaps are open, we'll get the mixture on the runway. Trim is set and we're ready to roll. We have 5,000 feet winds basically down the runway, slight right crosswind. Okay, everything's full forward, looking good. Got airspeed. One of the biggest differences between uh, EDSB weather and Sirius XM is that we get Sirius XM on the ground. So before we even took off, we had radar, we had METARs, lightning, everything. And now we went, you know, a few minutes after we took off uh, and leveled off in cruise, we still don't have any of that data loaded in EDSB. So this last weekend, I learned to fly the DC-3, did my SIC training in that, which basically just means that you have to become familiar with all the systems, do three takeoffs and landings to a full stop, and maneuvering with one engine uh, simulated inoperative. So, got the sign off for that. Now I have to take it to either a FISDO or a DPE. It was easier to go to a DPE here on Ithaca today. Uh, go to a DPE, show them the paperwork. They, you know, sign the IACRA form, and I have a new certificate that says type rating, DC-3, second in command, privileges only. So, gotta pick that up real quick, and then we're gonna head to Lawrence, get a cylinder change there, get some good food. And at first, I'm gonna drop past the airport. Total Hotel Papa, Roger, uh, still mind. Total Hotel Papa, clear visual approach, runway 32. Clear visual runway 32, it's not a problem. Okay, just in time, so we can- Total Hotel Papa, radio service terminated, come in this good tower, 100.6, good day. 10, 18, 6, and I'll follow Okay, so just in time before we went into that cloud layer so we could skirt around it. I am so windy today. On the fool's tank. Ears down. Okay, so we'll make a quick stop here. Okay, so I got my uh, new certificate with the DC-3 type rating on it, and now we're gonna head over to Lawrence, get some uh, maintenance done. And it looks like uh, I have some low IFR, so that'd be kind of fun. Okay, so we are on our way. Yeah, let's take a look at the weather here. So the latest weather at Lawrence is still uh, overcast 300. That was nine minutes ago. We'll see what it's like when we get there. So the top's here at 5,500. If we could get uh, ADSB data to load, we would see what they said. So today I'm flying with the Garmin GDL 52. Uh, it's basically a portable Sirius XM and ADSB AFR's GPS device. Everything you'd expect in a you know a portable weather device like that but it lets you get Sirius XM uh, on your iPad or your iPhone or whatever tablet you fly with. So you can get weather on your portable devices, 
uh, not just in the panel. So a lot of a lot of times, you know, I, I think people think that you can't get Sirius XM in a portable device like that. You know, you've got to get a USB then or something, but that's not the case. You get one of these, lets you get Sirius XM just right in, uh, right in the tablet here. So I've got Sirius XM in the panel. Today I'm using this just to be able to show you guys both of these in one place at the same time to kind of compare them. Uh, and also, you know, be aware that you can get the GDL-52 if you're hopping between different airplanes and, and stuff like that. You know, one thing I'm noticing here today, so we got a little bit of concern about icing. It's, it's zero up here. Uh, the temperature has been, been varying quite a bit, and there are clouds. So there's always some potential for icing, especially as we were climbing through, like, the tops of these. Uh, we didn't get any, but certainly it's something we're planning for. you notice that here in ForeFlight with ADS-B, if we want to look at freezing levels, we get this little freezing level G air mat here um, that tells us that there are multiple freezing levels between 3,000 and 11,000 feet here, which isn't really actually helpful in any way. So we can just go to the Sirius XM freezing levels, but with Sirius XM, we get the freezing levels in nice thousand foot increments. We can tell exactly what the lowest freezing level is uh, in each area. So there's a lot more information there. Yeah, I'll use weather at Lawrence, the broken 500, overcast 1100. One key difference on a day like today where we're a little concerned about icing or just getting on top above all the weather is that ADS-B cloud tops are actually just the forecast cloud tops. It's just based on model data, whereas Sirius XM uh, cloud tops are actually observed infrared satellite. So you can see here that ADS-B shows there's basically no clouds when the Sirius XM depiction uh, much more closely matches reality. Another thing, ADS-B has much lower resolution uh, winds than Sirius XM. So Sirius XM uh, gives you, you know, winds aloft just everywhere, all these different points, whereas ADS-B only gives you winds aloft over major airports. November 7, Hotel Papa, and the event you don't get the airport uh, for a few more miles, we'll just take you to the east side for the uh, right down one three two. Yeah, so I probably just dropped out of the clouds, we got the airport site. November 7, the Hotel Papa, cleared visual approach runway 32. Clear visual 3275. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the plane with them, then get started on that cylinder change, and I I'm gonna grab a bite to eat. We're here in Andover, Massachusetts. We're gonna stop at The Weather Company, formerly known as WSI. They're now an IBM business. And we're gonna see how they go from models and observations to what you see in the cockpit with Sirius XM. They have a team of meteorologists monitoring all of this weather data around the clock, filtering out false radar returns, for example, which also ensures other weather forecasts remain accurate. The problem is, is you have a situation like this where you have an upper level low. Um, it's producing a lot of lighter showers, so we don't want our logarithm to be too aggressive and take out those lighter showers. But at the same time, it's going to hit off the mountains. The radar's going to return off the mountains, and that's a lower level DVZ. Making sure pilots get the best and most up-to-date information possible. Radar vectors Bosox, Victor 1 Gram, Victor 1 4 Norwich, Victor 1 6 Dixie, Victor 229 Pansy, Echo November Oscar, then as filed, maintain 2000, expect 6000, 1 0 minutes, departure 124.4, Spark 1415, Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa. Bonanza 7 Hotel Papa, the read back, right? You can tell we're uh, breaking in number 5, because that one is the warmest. Okay, let's have some breakfast. So, uh, in the Bonanza, when you don't need your iPad, when the weather's nice and clear like this, 
We just use it right here as a nice little tray. It doesn't impede the yoke at all. If you move the yoke a lot, it'll fall, but we're not going to uh, move the yoke a lot. There was two of you There was a, a diamond, I think, that was calling. <sighs> Got some yogurt. So one nice thing about Sirius XM on a day like today is not only that we have higher resolution radar that updates every two and a half minutes, we get echo taps, we get storm tracks, so we can see even before we get an update uh, where the storm is going to be in uh, you know, 15, 30, 45 in an hour. Um, and the other thing is, is that like on a flight like today where we're still two hours out from the destination, uh, here we get a pretty good sense of what the weather's looking like down there. Uh, we can tell that it's you know generally moving kind of away from the airport, that kind of thing, and it's not going to be a factor. But, you know, we can tell that this cell down here is, is just moving out of the way. But if we go to uh, ADSB radar, that's much less obvious. First of all, we've basically got, you know, no update um, down that far. You know, we get a, a little bit of an update here on the, the regional radar. But uh, down here by our destination, all we see is this big glob of ugly stuff. We don't know what it's doing. We don't know if we're going to have to divert. There are 367 home cell Papa Hood, and I have a state clearance about the new baby to stop you. 702 Papa, go ahead. There are 7 home cell Papa, it appears to uh, Manassas via continue on Victor 16 to uh, Smyrna. That's Echo November Oscar. Victor 268, Baltimore. Then Alpha Mike Lima, direct to destination. Okay, uh, so the pops cleared to Manassas via continue on Victor 16 to Echo November Oscar, Victor 268 to Baltimore, Alpha Mike Lima, then, uh, was it direct for 7 Pop? 7 Alpha Pop, that's probably the last track. It's like right now with ADSB radar, it's hard to tell whether this reroute's gonna work because we don't really know what this weather up here is doing. Um, but if we switch over to Sirius XM, you know, immediately we can see that it's actually probably going to work because these uh, storm tracks are showing that uh, that weather will be right about to our route by the time we get there so it'll just be a small deviation to go around. In any case, it gives us a lot more information. The key to navigating uh, weather, in, especially in a, a slower plane, whatever, uh, the other day I was doing 130 knots on the way down to Atlanta with thunderstorms everywhere uh, because of the headwind. And the key is to start diverting as early as possible. So with Sirius XM, you've got that information to start making diversions hundreds of miles in advance so that you don't get backed into a corner when you get closer. You've got that fine detail way out there. So for instance, there was a, a squall line that we had to go around and with ADS view weather, it was very unclear uh, how we could get around it, whether we could get around it or whether we could just go right through it. It looked like there were a few breaks. Uh, Sirius XM made it obvious that you know it wasn't something we were going through and it gave us a lot of detail to navigate around it so we could get on the back side morning, and not have to worry forward. about yeah. that. Yeah. With ADS -B, it'd be much harder to tell just exactly where that's at. It looks more like it's you know, kind of broken up. Even up in here, it makes it look like this line uh, you know, keeps us right on the edge of that moderate precip. Whereas here we see that actually uh, there's moderate precip that extends pretty well below, uh, pretty, you know, south of our, our current line. The key advantage to having weather in the cockpit uh, is not, you know, short-term regional stuff, you can always look out the window and see what the weather is doing, or you can tune in the ATIS or the ASOS and get the current weather right here. The advantage that you have by having all of this data at your fingertips is that you can see 100, 200, 300 miles in advance and start making those decisions early so that you don't back yourself into a corner or a bad situation, uh, and you never get to a point where you have to tactically navigate weather because you've made all of these you know, strategic decisions much, much further in advance. So that's why with Sirius XM, you can do that. And with ADS-B, you know, it's, it's nice to have, it's, it's a good backup, but you can't make those same kinds of, of decisions and, and get that same level of detail and recency and, and grasp of what's going on with the weather right now. Uh, 376 Hotel Papa, climate maintain 6,000. 
I maintain six admin in the three six seven hotel pop in. A any chance we could stay at four? Unable at this time unless you I have to put you in line with all the other Victor sixteens. If you want I can hold you if you want, but I can't be just four with the next controller there with all the Kennedy arrivals and departures. Uh how long of a hold? I don't know. I depending on how much their sequence is if you want I can just ask and stand by there. Hold on one second there. Medic one zero four, it's gonna maintain five thousand. Five thousand, medic one oh four. Three seven six hotel pop, uh, three six seven hotel pop. Is it just for uh, is it for uh, weather reasons? Is that why you want to see it for? Uh, it's a combination of weather and some operational constraints today. I just remember. Three six seven hotel pop, but they can give me five. Can you do five thousand? Yeah, five thousand works. Seven hundred pop. All right, three six seven hotel pop, come and maintain five thousand. Up to five thousand, seven hundred pop. Thank you. So we know we're going to too high today because we want to maintain at least seventy five percent power to break in this new cylinder. So we run it fast to wear in uh, basically the, the cylinder walls. By the way, right now we're flying through some of the busiest airspace in the world, and it's incredible how accommodating these controllers are. They're so on top of the game. I mean, you can hear how busy this guy is. And, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, they gave us basically the altitude we wanted, uh, the route that we wanted. Uh, we're going to go right over the top of JFK, right past New York City. Um, they just do a fantastic job. Yeah, so we're not getting any, uh, any signal information with ADS-B right now. 1,500, climb at 4,100 hitting. Delta 484, need departure, good morning, radar contact, turn right. Here we are with Sirius XM. Right heading 180, Delta 484. I've reacted 043 near... So I'm actually not sure if today this lack of icing with ADS-B is related to our altitude. Maybe it's only certain ground stations that transmit the icing data. I don't know. But, you know, certainly in general, Sirius XM is just always going to be a lot more reliable, too, uh, which is especially important if you're navigating some complicated weather. Uh, you know, you can get it at any altitude in the mountains, in any terrain, anywhere in the contiguous U.S., and, you know, southern Canada, the Caribbean, uh, whereas ADSB, you know, at lower altitudes, like today, down at four or 5,000 feet or in the mountains, or on the ground, uh, you don't get that information. But with Sirius XM, you just have it all the time. Or like today, when we had to fly about an hour out of the way, just barely into uh, southern Canada, we're about 40 miles north of the border right now. We have absolutely no ADSB coverage at 6,000 feet, you know, just on the, on the north shore of Lake Superior. But we still got complete information with Sirius XM, so that's really nice because we've got a lot of weather going on today that we're trying to avoid. And so, uh, you know, we got to stay on top of everything. Sirius XM lets us do that. And another important distinction uh, becomes re less relevant this time of year, but certainly in the winter, uh, is that with ADS-B radar, we only get precipitation intensity. We don't get type. So with uh, Sirius XM, we can see here that just uh, 150 miles that way, not only is there some light rain, so there's some light snow and some light wintry mix. So that could be a, an important factor in the winter for icing, whether you're getting liquid precipitation or whether it's already frozen. And Sirius XM also gives us base reflectivity from the lowest radar tilt, so we get a better sense of what precipitation is actually at low altitudes or reaching the ground. And even there we get uh, precipitation type as well. And at longer ranges, uh, the other advantage with Sirius XM, besides just the resolution, uh, is also that it still updates every two and a half minutes. So uh, with Sirius XM, you get composite radar updates throughout the entire U.S. every two and a half minutes. Every two and a half minutes, they take all of the most recent data they have and they send it out to you. With ADS-B, uh, that stuff further away is only updated every 15 minutes. So here you're getting updates six times faster at those longer ranges that you, where you're you know really actually caring about the weather to start deviating. Atlantic City approach, Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa, 4000. Bonanza 367 Hotel Papa, Atlantic City approach, Atlantic City, 2900, 2990. 2990. Love the videos, man. Keep up the good work. Oh, awesome. Thanks. That's cool. Welcome to Manassas, Virginia. Let's go fly DC-3.
So it was fun. We just uh, you know, kind of got to know the plane, got a few people current. I'm already current because I just did the SIC type last weekend. And then we head back to Rochester. Number 7 Hotel Papa Manassas Ground. I have clearance advisor ready. Go ahead. 7 Hotel Papa clear to Rochester Airport via the Arsenal 5 departure. Martinsburg transition. Victor 501 to Hagerstown. Victor 377. Harrisburg. Victor 31 to Gibby. Gibby is spelled Golf India Bravo Bravo Echo Direct. Climb via the SID except maintain 2000, expect 5000, one zero minutes after departure. Departure frequency 128.52, squawk 3606. out here uh, today just looking at the ADSB radar it doesn't look too bad some moderate precip here and there but if we go to Sirius XM radar you know the echo tops are actually as high as 25,000 feet up here with uh, a couple little pockets of heavy to extreme precipitation and we see you know exactly where that stuff's gonna be here in uh, 15, 30, 45 minutes and an hour. So we can tell this stuff is going to be basically right along our route. November 367, host top top fighting 300. Uh, 300 for some top. And I guess just as far as the weather, this looks good on our end right now. Okay. Um, all right. It, you can go straight ahead then if you'd like. Okay. We'll make it about a 335 heading for now for some top. Right. Okay, we can see how it's pretty clear over here, and then the rain starts right over in there, which matches up with what we're seeing here. So we're kind of headed just towards the uh, edge of that moderate stuff. And of course, with Sirius XM, we can see all this weather uh, the infrared cloud tops as well. And another big one with uh, convective weather is that it includes cloud to cloud or intra cloud lightning. So uh, ADSB only includes cloud to ground lightning, but Sirius XM uh, includes both cloud to ground and intra-cloud lightning, where a lot of developing thunderstorms, and especially uh, in kind of the Midwest or the Central Plains, uh, a lot of thunderstorms start off and even severe thunderstorms continue to produce exclusively intra-cloud lightning. Actually, we saw that uh, in a video a few episodes back where we took off and down the air looked at uh, XM and we saw light precip, but it also had lightning everywhere. And, you know, as we looked out and got closer, we could start to see lightning everywhere. And uh, didn't like it, turned around and came home. But, you know, we couldn't even see that lightning uh, with ADSB, so we needed Sirius XM. And that's updated every two and a half minutes with Sirius XM versus uh, every five minutes for lightning uh, with ADSB. And you're still not getting it all. Okay, we should have the airport here in just a minute, but. That was fun. So I hope you guys learned some about SiriusXM. It was fun to partner with them to bring this to you guys. Uh, you can get it in portables like the GDL 51, the GDL 52. You can get it built into the plane with the GDL 69. Lots of options there. You can use it on your iPad in whatever plane, uh, or you can have it right in the panel. If you like this, hit like, subscribe, share it with all your friends, and stay tuned for some really awesome DC3 adventures. And we'll see you in the next one.